everyone, I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash and this is episode 30 in the podcast series. This episode is sweaterama time, baby. <laughs> so I've got a special guest, I've got Spencer coming on to share his Denali sweater. And I've got the, uh, you know, 10 other sweaters that I'm planning on knitting. So we'll talk about all that. Um, I also have a beautiful shawl with um, Jennifer uh, Geyer's uh, Pace and Presence yarn to talk about and uh, a giveaway for the end of the show. So I'm just gonna jump right in. Um, you can find me just about everywhere as Knitting the Stash on Ravelry and Instagram, on YouTube obviously, and on the blog, which is knittingthestash.wordpress.com. Welcome to all of you who are coming back. Welcome to new viewers. It's so nice to see all of you. I'm hope happy to be podcasting on this kind of long weekend. My son is at a sleepover. Uh, and so I found a few minutes here uh, of time to sit in the yarn room and have a little chat with you guys. So it's really nice to be here and relaxing a little bit before the semester begins. Uh, so the uh, first segment is actually a segment with the Spencer. Um, and we have... <laughs> We are alone with Tink right now, so Tink may very well appear, but um, that'll be first up. So let's jump right in. Okay, so Spencer is here to show off the F.O. for this uh, podcast F -O. episode. Finish. That's great. I'm wearing a sweater and it's called an F.O. <laughs> it's F -O. called an F.O. This is Denali by Nora Gon, and I've been talking to you guys about it for the last two podcasts. It is finished. Some of you might have seen that on Instagram, a couple of the photos. And I'll do a follow-up blog post um, and Ravelry Project page so you can see the full extent of the sweater. But the best part is we have Spencer here to um, fully model it. So that's exciting. And probably talk about it, maybe. I have a few things to say. Okay. So, <laughs> you want to go first? You want me to go first? You go. Do you, do you think? Okay. So, um, what I want to say about the sweater is that it is an awesome cable masterpiece creation, I think. And uh, it's not something that I ever imagined I would be able to knit. Uh, and in fact, back when I started knitting um, sweaters, Spencer said, would you knit me a fisherman's cable sweater and I was like uh no that would have to wait until okay, I'm I, good at what I do. At that point I didn't realize that was like a big big thing to ask so you know she asked me like you know what can I knit for you and I just kind of said uh, a cabled sweater like I saw in Ireland one time <laughs> thinking you know that's just like not a big deal and then it took like maybe four years of practice yeah to get to, get to this point. To get the point. So, and some of you are probably like super advanced knitters and you're just like, ah, fisherman's cable sweater, no problem. But this is a pretty, I mean, to me, this is a pretty cool accomplishment. It was so. ambitious. Um, Most, it, mostly because he asked for a specific kind of yarn with the grease in okay, it. And so right. I had to modify the whole pattern to okay. match <laughs> okay, the yarn. No, no, no. Okay. okay, so I just wanted a hardcore sweater. I just said, can you knit me a hardcore sweater? <laughs> so she interpreted that No, you as, said cables, and you said fisherman, and you said waterproof. But she found an island in the North Atlantic that doesn't have postal service or sheep. And that island was supposed to produce the wool, so it, they had to find the one hairless sheep to like import to the island, shave it, and make the yarn for the sweater, which took months. Then they had to, you know, like ship it across the ocean on like a fishing barge. Yeah. The <laughs> Tink so, is also with us because we are two adults left alone in the house. But it is really hardcore. It has a, um, uh, you know, it's kind of like rough and thick and uh, like water resistant and all that stuff that I was looking for. That is true. And I've been, been sure, there's sink. <laughs> I've been sure not to uh, wash it um, in too warm a water to <laughs> get rid of the line on it. So. She sounds like Chewbacca. Thank you. Yes, yeah, she, she does sound like Chewbacca. Come Should on, just baby. come up here with us? You can yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. <laughs> yeah, you can sit with me. How about that? Let me sit with her because you can yeah. sit around. Okay. You can smell all the yarn that's off screen here. Um, so the yarn is actually from the Island Wool um, Company and it is the Snaidlin yarn and I don't think I have a um The Snaidlin yarn? Oh yeah, I do have a tag. Look at that. How convenient. This is the Snaidlin yarn. I'll hold it up here. Let's see if the camera can yeah, There it is. Um, and it's from the Faroe Islands. 
and it does say Faroe Islands on there, and it's in another language, so you can't actually. It looks say. like <laughs> Danish, but it's probably Faroese. <laughs> and so it took us a while to get this yarn because the awesome people yeah. at Island Wool had to um, shave a bald sheep, no. the one that lives on the island. They were cool enough to tell me that um, the yarn that I initially ordered, they didn't have enough in the um, same color lot or in the same uh, for the sweater, and they um, were kind enough to not only fix up the order and wait for the new colors to come in, but they sent me an extra skein of yarn to make up for my trouble, which wasn't very much trouble at all. So uh, that is where the yarn for your sweater came from. And I think it's pretty cool because it does have, it is in the grease, so it has lanolin um, still in the yarn. And the sweater is pretty waterproof. We've splashed a few drops of water in there just to test it. And uh, it came out pretty good. And the dog is not chewing in a boat. <laughs> So um, I'm pretty proud of this because the yarn that I use, the Snowden yarn, is not um, the pattern yarn, and in fact it's thicker, it's, it's a heavier weight than the, um, the yarn for the pattern. And so I had to do a lot of modifications, which I told you guys about in the last um, couple of podcast know. episodes. Know. Um, but I love the way that um, I was able to modify it and uh, not only modify the size to fit Spencer's body and to um, work with this yarn, but I, he wanted a cable on the sleeve. And so I added this cable, which is... Um, it's the same one as yeah, this go. guy, only this guy does some curvy cable -y stuff, and this guy is straight. Did I get that right? Yeah, you got that right. You, if you have a, a hand-knitted uh, cable sweater, you need to know your cables That's just right. so you can, you know, talk about it. Hey, you want to go over to him? No. So the sleeve modification worked out, and because they're saddle shoulders, um, I was able to bring the cable all the way up and then do the modifications um, in the back so that it kind of ends right here, and then the back is nice stockinette portion to be able to um, uh, seam it up and do a, a nice... Um, Kitchener stitch in the back so that it came out really nicely. So I was really happy about that. I had to redo the collar two or three different times because um, my bind up, it's a turned hem. Um, and thank you for being so accommodating. <laughs> it's a turned hem. And uh, so I added a pearl row here, which is what I always do with turned hems um, because it helps it turn really nicely. And uh, uh, but I had to redo it a few different times because my bind off, um, I didn't do a stretchy enough bind off the first time. Um, it was kind of like putting on a tourniquet. It was no good. And I thought, you know, you want the experience of putting on a sweater to be really nice. So I just pulled it all out and just completely redid it um, a couple times to make sure that it was stretchy enough and um, matched the stretchiness of the, both the picked up stitches and the twisted rib um, that I used for the collar. So uh, as you guys know, there were a lot of modifications in the sweater and a lot of things that um, went wrong before they went right. Um, and I'm very happy with the, uh, how it all came out and uh, the way that it seamed up. Um, I was able to seam the cables directly into um, various parts of the sleeve in the back and, and he doesn't like me poking him. So it's like, it's like extra <laughs> special for him to sit here while I do it's all just, this. It's just dehumanizing. He really, he really hates that part. But I have a horror story for you, which I will also follow up with a how-to and helpful tip. You got to tell um, them the story? Yeah. Okay. I, so, I didn't think she was going to go public on this one. I'm going public on this. All right. So you guys all know I finished the sweater. I put pictures up on Instagram, just a couple as a kind of teasers, you know. And then Spencer came over and uh, was standing in the living room and I was just staring right at the front of his sweater. And I'm looking and I start like thinking to myself, don't look for errors. Don't I look thought for errors. she and I were having a moment. But she yeah, was you were like looking. you were like gonna hug me. She, and I was just I, like I thought we were having a moment and she at was sweater. staring at the cable pattern yeah. and she flipped out. And as it turns out, like my brain can't not find errors and it was the <laughs> biggest error <laughs> you could ever find it in was a cable not sweater. That big a deal. It's huge. If you look back at the Instagram photo, you'll and you're very discerning, you'll find it. One of the cables didn't weave. Didn't go underneath where it was supposed to go. And it's one of the big cables, and it's right in the front of his chest, like right, right here, right here, here, right here. Like and I'm going to post about this on the blog, how I actually fixed it. Um, but in this podcast, I'm going to give you the, I'll give you the photos here so you can see the before and after. So this cable just kind of lays flat, and the other one just went over it, and it is completely wrong. It's the only one that was miscrossed in the entire sweater, but it's right here in the front of his sweater. So... I hemmed and hawed, and I was just like, "Oh God, I can't! I can't stare at that! I can't! You you have to either let me unseam the entire sweater and completely unknit the front and fix it, that or I nuts. have to come up with a solution." That was nuts. My solution was a patch, and so this little cable right here, which you maybe can't even see very well on the screen. I'll stand up. No, no, no! You should not stand up because the dog is sleeping on the pillow. <laughs> um, 
this little cable right here is actually a patch. And here are the photos to show you um, what it looks like. I knit this to be the same um, width as the other cables going on here, so it's seven stitches wide. But as you can see, these cables, when they cross, they kind of tuck in just a little bit because of her pattern. And so when I knit this little patch, I did decreases on either side to pinch it in just a little bit, and then I did increases again to have it come out. And these cables, the way they are, there's a little pocket kind of underneath each one. And so I tucked the patch up underneath one pocket, tucked the patch up down underneath the other pocket, and just tacked it in behind. I don't think anyone would notice. You can feel it because it it's, um, sticks up a little bit more because there's extra yarn underneath, but I think you can't see it. And so I think you should have done it with Velcro. So that you could just yeah, like... Yeah, like pull it off and then put it back on. But it started to bother you. It was like one of those things. It was like the... Have you, you ever read The Birthmark? Once you see it... By like Nathaniel Hawthorne oh, and that like whole... Oh, it's so literary all of a sudden. The husband has a wife that has this beautiful... She's beautiful except she has this little like weird birthmark on her face and he just goes crazy trying to get rid of it and he eventually kills her. It was her. a little bit like that. It was wow, a little bit like that. eventually kills her. Well, it's great. So you were we, feeling... <laughs> Like maybe we I'll were, just bury him out back. We were wandering through the house and like I was like really bothered by it and he was like, No, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine and then finally he was like, No, it's really bothering it me. It would I would look in the mirror and I would just kinda of stare at yeah. it. Yeah. So that's why the patch was necessary. And I think But it, it wasn't was a pillow. Awesome. It's not that it became a pillow. Like your no, sweater didn't, it didn't suck so bad that it was a pillow. No. But you have a sweater that became a pillow. I guess I do. Yeah, I should talk about it. <laughs> I'm going to talk about it next. <laughs> okay, uh, I just need to say a little bit about what it's like to have someone knit you a sweater. Go for it. Um, it was really cool uh, as an experience, but also like surprising along the way. Because I would be sitting around the house doing something, and Melissa would kind of come at me with some square <laughs> of yarn and like put it on my wrist or around my neck or on my torso just to see if it was fitting all along. I know that seems weird, but as you, for you guys who are knitters, of course, most of you are knitters, you know that that's how you have it to size It was weird. Things, it was almost you know? like I had a wound on my arm and she needed to <laughs> bandage it, and then she would do it again and again and again, and <laughs> always with this concern that it wasn't going to fit. Oh, it's too tight, it's too small, it's going to be too big or whatever, um, but it ended up fitting really, really well. Oh, you didn't mind that too much. No, that was good. Yeah. Was so. Just strange. <laughs> Do you have other things to say about it? Um, no, not really. You like it? Yeah, it's awesome. It's I like good. it a lot. It yeah. fits you really good. Yeah, yeah. It's warm. The sweater is really warm, um, comfortable, and you know, it's just one of a kind. Uh, it actually, this this is gonna sound funny, and you should probably cut this out of your video, <laughs> but the first time I put it on, I thought it was kind of weird that it didn't have a tag in the back. Um, because, you know, everything I have is store-bought, except for the other sweater you made me. Yeah. Um, so, it was just kind of like a realization that I was putting on something that was knitted <laughs> stitch by stitch. Uh, which kind of freaks me out. Um, you know, just the idea that you methodically knitted an entire sweater, like, one stitch at a time. It's kind of freaky. Strange. Yeah, it's just I amazing. Tink likes it. Yeah, it's amazing. Tink likes it out the window, too. Mm -hmm. Woof. Yeah, what's out there? Okay, so uh, one other thing I wanted to do, um, since I'm visiting the yarn room, uh, which is really nice to even have access to here in the house, uh, since it's kind of like private space and Tink and I aren't usually allowed in here. Um, uh, one thing I want to do is just uh, mention my experiences knitting sweaters, uh, which are kind of limited. Um, but did You did knit a sweater though. I did, did result in um, a kind of wonderful, uh, what I call sweater pillow. And um, uh, to knit a sweater pillow, uh, all you need to do is look on my Ravelry page, <laughs> and I have a uh, description of all the ins and outs of knitting a sweater pillow. Um, basically what I learned when I knitted a sweater was that um, I could make a, a, the body portion pretty well. So yeah. have some faith. Like the tube that your body goes into if you're knitting a really basic sweater um, was this. It, I know it looks a little bit big, but uh, this was the tube. Um, but then when I got to like the neck and things, Melissa had this idea of like patterns and suggestions about shaping and short rows and all that. And I did learn short rows. You did teach me that for the... She's kidding. She wants to lay on the sweater pillow. <laughs> yeah, Tink is now on the sweater pillow. Which is very um, happy. Uh, but then I ended up having... Uh, my first sleeve was the same size as the torso. So it just got kind of weird. And I um, <laughs> got demoralized and then I realized that I could just make a pillow out of my sweater. 
and um, cut it and sewed it up and felted it and made a pillow out of it. So um, that is to say. Now this. Go ahead. This makes it seem like I might not be the best teacher. I was cause... really resistant to following any advice about my sweater. Thank you. I figured I just had it in the bag. <laughs> And um, I didn't at all have it in the bag. It was a good looking sweater until you got to the sleeves. The sleeves, I don't know. The, yeah, um, I don't know. Well, there was only one sleeve. and I don't know what Also, the yarn it. came from the small island in the North Atlantic called Michael's Fabric Store. Or was it? <laughs> Is that what it was? Anyway, it, it was hard to find. And um, uh, <laughs> But here's the deal. Um, it's kind of amazing that I'm wearing a sweater that didn't end up being a pillow. Right, but like it's it the actually, same color as your sweater it pillow. It actually worked. That's so right. Like, it must be your favorite color. Yeah. It That's is. good to know. Yeah, it is. I love it. It's a great sweater. It's really cool. Aww. I've never had anything like it. Aww. It's really nice. warm. That's good. And we look like freaking dorks wearing two handmade sweaters sitting here. <laughs> it's like a ski vacation in 1974. It's awesome. Oh, I'm wearing my Eba pullover, which is awesome. I talk about it in way back in a, lo in a very so old So does this one have a name? Yours is Denali. Denali pullover? It's like the Denali sweater. The Denali me. sweater. It's awesome. Tallest perfect. mountain in North America. Yeah. Claim as many lives. Yeah. Well, this sweater did. <laughs> <laughs> it won't claim your life if you're a knitter. It almost claimed my life. Yeah, with the ribbing, but you know. So. Uh, one it. more thing. Oh. Um, I gotta get under tink. Yeah. What is this? This is a surprise. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. Okay, and then uh, before I go, I just wanted to, um, <laughs> for uh, the next giveaway, maybe you can put this in one of your bags. Uh, follow me oh on Instagram God. or uh, YouTube. Does it, did it show up? There it is. Meta Spencer, and please just put that sticker in your next giveaway bag. <laughs> it's right here. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll put it on your wall. And thanks for having me. I should me. pin it up. Thanks for having me on your podcast. Thanks for coming in. It was nice. I can't believe she just wanted to sit on the freaking pillow. That's all she really wanted it was your sweater pillow. <sighs> So, <laughs> I love having Spencer on the podcast. It's just so much fun to have him in here. Um, he does like coming in the yarn room, I think, even though he resists the whole thing. Um, and the Denali sweater did come out pretty well, so it was nice to see it um, and to share it with you guys. Uh, so, I have a couple of uh, whips that are also sweaters, and I will get to them in just a minute. But I wanted to first tell you a little bit about what I decided to do with the beautiful yarn that um, Jennifer Geyer of... Wild Lily Artisan Fiber sent to me, and uh, on the last podcast I showed you a bunch of it. I can kind of pull it out now. It's in my work bag. Um, and this is my, my bag is a, um, a Kate of Hawthorne Cottage Crafts bag, which I love. Um, so these are just some of the colors of the beautiful yarns that um, Jennifer Geyer sent me. And this is from the her latest um, run of yarn, which is the Pace and Presence series. Uh, it's a gorgeous, let's see if the camera will get it. Come on camera, there we go. Pace and presence. And it's a gorgeous two-ply um, that is both um, kind of really soft and lustrous at the same time. Um, and it's a mix of CVM, Shetland, BFL, Blueface Luster, and Gotland. Um, and it's all milled in Colorado, really gorgeous yarn. And um, she sent it to me as a little holiday gift and I wanted to knit up something super special with it. So what I chose is, um, I know a lot of people are knitting mittens right now and I think this yarn would be perfect for mittens. It would be perfect for color work of all kinds because it is really gorgeous. And the colors, um, I believe, and I have to check with Jennifer on this, but I believe that all the colors are dyed an over dye of this natural beautiful gray so they have this beautiful heather to them and they all kind of work together um, when you line them up together it's like they were all meant to be you could mix and match them in any kind of way so they're perfect for color work but I decided that I wanted to use them for a shawl that I've always wanted to make but never had quite the right set of yarn for and that is the on the spice market shawl um, and this is uh, probably a shawl that a lot of you are familiar with but this is my start to it, and I'll try to show you all the different colors. I'll hold it back here, maybe you can see it a little better that way. Um, so this is just the beginning of the shawl. Uh, it's a triangular shawl. 
So you start down here with about six stitches and then you work your way that way um, with increases and decreases and it's a bias shawl. Um, and I really love the triangular bias shawls because they just seem to work better for me. I think they're really comfortable, easy to wear, um, more functional than the kind of big wraparound shawls because it's just not my thing. Um, but I love these triangular shawls. So shawls. <laughs> and so this on the Spice Market shawl is perfect. And you can really see how Jennifer's colors just kind of flow together no matter which colors you choose, they just really work together so well. Um, and so this shawl will have um, a set of this kind of what appears to be kind of uh, color work, but it's really a slip stitch pattern where you're working just one color at a time, which is really easy to do. Um, and uh, the pattern calls for four repeats of each um, color. I'm gonna shorten it because I don't I don't want it to be a huge shawl and Melanie Berg in um, an interview with uh, on Wolfful talks about really liking big shawls and this this would turn out to be a big shawl if I did all the repeats. Um, I want to keep it a little more narrow and so I'm gonna do I think two maybe three repeats of each color and that'll kind of shorten it up a little bit and then at the other end of the shawl as you get to the larger piece of bias triangle um, there'll be more stripes. Um, so all these colors will come back in full on the other side of the shawl. I am super happy with this. Jennifer, your yarn is knitting up just gorgeous, and I want to just try to see if the camera can capture some of that texture um, and color and the heathered beauty of this whole thing. I just love it, and the way that they play together. They play together really well, if you're interested in color work. Um, so that's my On the Spice Market shawl. And I'm actually using this as a kind of in-between project because <laughs> everything else I am knitting or am going to knit in the next foreseeable future are sweaters. So um, one of the things I'm working on right now, the other um, work in progress, uh, is a test knit kind of collaborative pattern um, that uh, I'm working with uh, Albina uh, of LB Hand Knits. And LB Hand Knits is an awesome um, outfit, one woman outfit um, in Ireland and I found her because um, the other sweater that I'm planning on knitting uh, is her latest pattern. Let's see if the wind window can catch it. Is this one? Um, and when I saw this sweater I just Let's see if we can see some of the other ones. Oh, not that one. This one. There he is. Here's some of the details for that sweater. It has this beautiful kind of funnel neck, kind of cowly neck really beautiful textured pattern and it just kind of looks like it sits really nicely um and so i saw that on instagram had to have it i've told you guys about that before on previous podcasts and uh, i got in touch with albina and she uh we just started talking and so now i'm working on a test knit for her which is going to be awesome and this is the um the yarn that she sent me from ireland to work out to work with this is a donegal tweed um, straight from Ireland and it is gorgeous really great colors um, and you can see all the flecks of tweed in there uh, and it's knitting up beautifully I'll just show you what the fabric looks like it's a beautiful kind of robin's egg blue it's got a little tweed in there it looks a little heathered um, I just wanted to show you the fabric that I'm creating here with it um, so this is the test knit is uh, for a pattern that she's writing for a top-down cardigan and uh, I've been cleared to talk about it just a little so that's why I'm mentioning it and showing you some of the fabric um, and I've uh, I'm kind of working on the first part of the test knit at this moment and about to send her some feedback um, it's a great pattern it's gonna be wonderful um, her other pattern for that latest sweater that um, I'm gonna work up is really well written and beautiful so I can't wait to keep going on this test knit, but that is on the needles at the moment. Uh, then that latest sweater um, is next, and my yarn arrived. Um, this So this is S-Twist Wool from, um, straight from Ireland, uh, and this one's just in purple, and it's a kind of mixed wool. They call it a mixed mountain fleece. Uh, and it's an Aran weight. Um, about 150 meters for 100 grams. I think you can catch it there pretty well. Um, and it's got some really nice lights and darks, different kinds of purples going on. Let's see if the camera can really get it. The camera wants to not focus. There it is. 
So you can really see that it has a lot of different kind of heathered variation in it. And that will lend itself really well to the to the sweater pattern. Here's another skein of it. And you can see it's got a little more variation. The thing about this yarn though that is like super sweet is I opened the package and did what I always do, which is like put yarn to nose and uh, Oh God, it just smells like, I'm like covered in fiber now. <laughs> it smells like pure sheepy goodness. Um, and it reminds me very much of the yarn, the Shetland that I used for um, my uh, Isabel Kramer cardigan, my alias cardigan. And I think it will knit up really um, nicely and be a kind of thick, yummy sweater. So I'm very excited about that sweater. And uh, El, uh, Albina of LB Hennets is sponsoring a giveaway, and that will be on the next, on episode 31. Um, so look out for that, because I've got some yarn and a hat pattern for you. Um, but once those two sweaters are finished, uh, I fell in love. And I have to just tell you guys, when I fall in love with a sweater pattern, it happens. Like, I fell in love with Eba, which I'm wearing now. I fell in love with Alias, which I knit two versions of. Uh, and the other day, um, Brooklyn Tweed put out, uh, I think it's their 18th, is that right? Was it their 18th? Anyway, their latest update had, um, tons of patterns in it. Uh, and I'm, I'm a Brooklyn Tweed fan to a certain extent. Like I love checking out their lookbooks and I love their kind of aesthetic. I think it's really pretty. Um, I don't always love their patterns. They don't always seem, um, they're not always practical, I guess. Some of them are practical, some not so practical. But they're really, some of them are avant-garde, some of them are really interesting, they're really just funky and pretty and cool. Um, but <laughs> in the latest issue, uh, Nora Gon, who designed Spencer's Denali sweater, uh, designed a new pattern for Brooklyn Tweed, and I saw it, probably many of you saw it on Instagram, and I just, that was it. I saw it and that's it. I'm making it just like that latest sweater that um, uh, Albina designed. So this is, um, this is the photo that was up on Instagram from Noragon. And this is Geiger. And I think you can see it there. Yes, I hope so. And this is the back of it. I'm hoping that it's capturing it. I think so. Yeah, that's the back. And this is um, the version that was knit in a very um, light kind of yellow yarn. Um, the other version is this darker version, which is very hard to see the cables. Um, and I want to show you, this is what the sweater actually looks like. If you haven't checked out the Brooklyn Tweed um, website or lookbook, you should just to check out this sweater more. I don't think the, the dark doesn't capture it at, at all. Um, but, but hell if that lighter yarn captures those cables, right? So one of the things that I think is really interesting about this sweater is the front and the way that, um, this ribbed portion at the front on the lower front, um, makes it look like it's, it makes it look like it's a jacket, like the cardigan kind of comes up in a triangle, but the, there's actually ribbing that's kind of sitting down lower. So the lines of it are just really flattering. Um, and tons of cables. And, and now that I know Nora Gon's kind of pattern style, I'm excited to, to try another of her patterns. Um, it's listed as an advanced cable knit sweater, but so was Denali. Um, and I've decided that I'm, I'm <laughs> I've knit for enough years now that that kind of thing is actually very exciting to see. Like an advanced cable knit sweater with all kinds of seaming and uh, cable crosses and all kinds of like shaping that's happening at the same time as the cable crosses. I'm like, I'm in. Let's do this. It's going to be awesome. So I ordered my yarn. I made it a little easy on myself um, because for this particular sweater I decided to go with the um, yarn that's... Um, that you're supposed to use in the pattern, the Arbor, which is a Brooklyn Tweed three ply, um, kind of plump, perfect for cables kind of yarn. Um, and so I sprung for it. It was like my late Christmas gift to myself. Um, and I chose the color I chose is actually a kind of interesting late blue. And I don't think I'll be able to pull it up right now. Um, maybe I'll show you in uh, another episode. Um, the reason I chose the light blue is because I wanted a light enough color to show the cables, but I, 
of the Arbor colors, there weren't that many that really like resonated with me. Um, and this blue is like a really nice blue. It's light enough that the cables will show up, but um, a lot of the book Brooklyn Tweed yarn, if you kind of search across websites, you're not you're gonna find that the the color is represented very differently um, by different uh, websites and different photographs. The color that I chose, the kind of light blue, um, was one of the only colors that I liked and that when I did a Google search um, in images for that color, um, most of the images came up showing about the same color. color. I know that sounds kind of weird, but if you were to type in Brooklyn Tweed Arbor, you know, any a lot of the different colors, you'd see a huge kind of difference between different representations of those colors. And that is um, that can be really problematic because you might order a yarn with a colorway that you really think you like and then get it in hand um, when you can't go to a store and see it. Get it in hand and it's not what you expected. Um, so the color that I chose, at least across a bunch of different um, sites, looks the same. So I am hoping that that works out well. Um, I'm pretty excited about it. And I, I need to get my test knit finished and I need to finish my shawl and then do my other sweater and then I get to Geiger. So it is gonna be Sweaterama year here on the um, podcast. Uh, and as you guys know, I'm also doing the Remake Along, um, which is a sweater project for um, this year. And you can expect the first Remake Along video um, to be up next weekend. So. Video number one. I promised one video a month um, on the remake along and that will be next weekend So look forward to that the remake along for anyone who wants to get involved is uh, basically a Make along for anyone who has a sweater that is they love or loved or have seen but don't possess um, And they want to make it uh, again and kind of read the pattern from the sweater uh, choose a yarn or a textile that really like works for you. So maybe you have a sweater that was knit out of cotton but you want to knit it out of wool. Maybe you have a sweater that was your grandmother's that you love but it's falling apart. Maybe you have um, a sweater that you saw in a big box store and you kind of remember what it's like but you want to recreate it. All those kinds of things are great for the remake along um, and you're most welcome to join us. There's a Ravelry thread open for sharing your initial photographs and ideas and questions and concerns and I'll be in there in that thread kind of answering questions as many as I can. I'm gonna remake um, one of my sweaters for um, the video series and it's a cotton sweater that I wanna um, remake out of wool, cotton cabled sweater. But I have some suggestions. I have another um, kind of Feral Colorwork sweater and I have a uh, another um, kind of pullover that uh, all would be good candidates and I'll talk about some of the strategies for those things in this video series for um, the year and if you have suggestions for things you'd like to see in the video series please put them up in the thread I will be reading the thread and um, adding things to the videos so that'll be pretty exciting I hear Tink kind of running around a little bit we'll see if she comes up here um, so the remake along is in process new video next weekend and we're gonna do some we'll have to do some prizes for that so i will round up some prizes and whoever um, ends up finishing a sweater in the remake along this year will be eligible to win one of those prizes yay <laughs> giveaways are good um and i have a giveaway for you guys uh, that i'll talk about in just a minute but the other long-term project that we have going on around here at Knitting the Stash is the Knit Together project. And for that one, I've been receiving uh, beautiful 8x8 eight eight, uh, inch blanket squares from so many of you. Uh, I have a big box of them back here. Um, and I think I said last time when we're getting up to like a six or seven foot blanket um, at this point. So keep the squares coming. I really love seeing them and appreciate hearing the stories behind them. If you want to get involved in the Knit Together project, there are needles out there that you may be sent, um, but you can just jump in at any time. There is a project page for it on the website um, under knittingstash.wordpress.com backslash KTP. So go over there, help yourself figure out what's going on and send me squares. This week's square is gorgeous. And it comes from Kate Boyd. And Kate was actually, um, she posed a question about short rows, sweater short rows in the last episode um, that I answered. And then I opened my mailbox and I got a square from her. So thank you, Kate. This thing is beautiful. Um, I think you can really catch, I'm gonna put it up here so you can really see the colors and the texture. And I just wanna read a quick bit about what Kate said about this particular square. Um, 
She said it's yarn spun, mostly uh, organic Polworth roving from her local yarn store, along with some mystery wools that she dyed herself. Um, and then she said, this square contains a million meaningful particles to me. The yarn was among my first efforts at dyeing and spinning after pulling my wheel from eight years of idleness um, after she was living in California for a while um, and decided to give it another go. It was among my first efforts at com uh, combining colors at a pace and density that would reflect the vividness and chaotic order of a certain kind of Midwestern sunset. And so this is the um, beautiful square from Kate Boyd. Thank you, Kate. It will be lovingly added to the blanket. Uh, if you send in a square for the Knit Together project, you are automatically entered to win the finished blanket for this uh, Knit Together project in the final giveaway, which will be sometime later once we're done collecting squares. So. Thank you, Kate. That's awesome. Keep those squares coming, you guys. I love seeing them and hearing your stories um, about the yarn and the knitting that uh, goes into them. Awesome. Uh, okay, last but certainly not least, today is the giveaway. And I am so happy to have a giveaway from Dynamics Yarn. And this is the mother-daughter duo of Mars and Adachi that uh, I uh, sponsored with a blog post a blog spot um, a couple weekends ago and they do a lot of uh, natural dyeing and their yarn base is just gorgeous and uh, now having it in hand I can certainly attest to that uh, so this is the giveaway yarn this is uh, raw honey and this is fruitcake 2017 the 2017 edition and you can see they play very well together they're just a gorgeous duo of yarns i think the camera's kind of picking up on them yeah the camera's doing pretty good with that color um these they do a lot of natural dyeing both of these are naturally dyed um and this fruitcake one is uh 50 percent merino wool 50 percent silk and it's 438 yards for 100 grams and this raw honey one is the same merino silk and they feel that way oh so soft so soft i love them i love them very much um but i'm not going to keep them they're for you guys so i've got two skeins of yarn and i'd like to pick two winners to send these skeins to okay um, so what do you have to do to win one of these beautiful skeins of yarn it's pretty simple I would like to know what questions you would ask Mars and Adachi, uh, whether it's about raw, uh, natural dyeing or whether it's about working as a mother-daughter team or how they come up with inspiration for colorways. Any kind of question that you might have um, for them or question about their Etsy shop or a suggestion for colorways that they uh, might put together in the future, um, post those questions either here on the YouTube video comments or I'll open a thread over in Ravelry and you can post them there uh, and I will draw two winners by the next podcast for these two gorgeous skeins of yarn and this one's raw honey and this one is fruitcake 2017 edition so thank you so much Marcin Adachi for all of the uh, great interview time that you spent with me and for sending along these gorgeous skeins of yarn to share with all of the viewers. I can't wait to do the drawing and send these out to a couple of lucky giveaway winners. Um, I think, I think that's almost it for today. Almost it. That is it. <laughs> that's it. We're done. Finny. And it's just in time to uh, go enjoy the evening a little bit and uh, take the dog for the puppy for a long walk and uh, get some knitting done. So I wish you all the best in the new year and uh, I can't wait to talk to you more about this Remake Along project and the Knit Along project and uh, I'll see you here next time. Thanks for stopping by guys. See ya. <laughs> Do you need to be in here? Hi. Okay. Oh. Alright. That's great. Okay. Okay, so you've done, what have you done so far in the podcast? You've introduced yourself. Yes. <laughs> Ow. Okay. <laughs> okay. This is going to go in the outtakes. No, this is good. This is, this is what podcasting is all about. Puppies. Okay.